specifically, thanks Senator Thune and, and the governor for being here today and, and uh, you know, allowing us to uh, travel around the city and see what's going on in Sioux Falls with the flooding. Uh, as soon as we knew there was going to be flooding, uh, and it looked like it was going to be worse than we realized. First call I got on this was from the governor, which meant a lot to me. Um, so to know that, thank you. Um, and basically, it was a message saying, "Hey, how can I help? You let me know how we can help." And so knowing we have that connection to Falls with Peter is really, really valuable and uh, really important. So uh, I want to just talk about a few specifics, and I'm going to let Senator Thune and the governor know and just talk about some of the more. Uh, general thoughts on what they've seen and how the uh, state and the feds might be able to help us. Specifically, you know, the river levels are changing. The, the Skunk Creek and the river levels rose again yesterday, another two feet, or excuse me, overnight, another two feet. Uh, and so that's going to continue to impact some road closures, uh, and we're going to probably see that pattern for a while here, kind of a, a lowering and an increase. So uh, 57th Street's tunnel remains closed. Uh, Kelly Li Branch Library is closed. Oxbow between 49th and 57th is still closed. Westport Avenue, 41st to 49th remains closed. And 12th Street at La Mesa is open, but um, it's been heavily impacted, so just be cautious traveling that area. You know, obviously the parks and, and, and bike trail system is closed. Um, you don't have to be a genius to go to Yankton Trail and see you're not going to be on the bike trail today. We'll mm -hmm. spend some time there. It's, and I would expect it to be closed for a while. And I know a bike trail is a jewel in our city, and with the spring temps, people want to get out on the trail. Just uh, stay off the trail if you can uh, until we get the debris cleaned up there. Uh, people have asked about wastewater. We asked to limit water consumption for a while. Um, the plant, good news, is running back to normal. So you can, again, uh, flush your toilets, and you can uh, do laundry. And uh, you can take a shower. Got a lot of guys reaching out to me saying their wives want them to shower. So guys, you got the green light to start showering again. Um, if you experience a sewer backup, just call our Public Works uh, Water Rec Division. That's 367-8198. Uh, uh, we've had seven confirmed backups. Um, and let me tell you, that could have been uh, much, much higher. And I saw videos and photos of the city team sandbagging around lift stations literally just a chain, passing these sandbags to protect these lift stations. So uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a huge shout out to the city teams that protected those lift stations because that seven could have been 77 really easily. Uh, so great work by them. Uh, just a reminder, we're waiving our landfill fees uh, until the end of the month. So you can bring, um, bring your, your stuff, uh, your carpet, your, your items that have been impacted uh, out to the landfill. Uh, safety continues to be our top priority, uh, even though the worst seems to be behind us. I tell you, the river is a really dangerous place right now. Uh, there's a lot of debris and a lot of ice chunks. We had a uh, gentleman who swam in the river yesterday as a stunt. That's not a stunt. That's not funny. Uh, you need to stay away from the river and respect Mother Nature. Respect the falls right now. Uh, the falls are really rushing, and I know it seems like a great selfie photo op to get close to those falls, but they're dangerous, especially those uh, who are downtown right now for St. Patty's Day. I know there's uh, a, a tradition of drinking at St. Patty's Day. Uh, I'd ask you to just stay away from the river um, because safety is still our number one priority. So have fun at St. Patty's Day. Uh, aside from my regular saturation patrol tonight. So. Uh, going to drink, don't drive. Use Lyft, uh, get a DD, call a cab, whatever you have to do. And then two last things. Uh, if you want to volunteer, reminder, you call 211 Helpline Center. Uh, they're coordinating all the volunteer efforts. Ran into a gentleman this morning. He said, hey, I'm out here. Just got to I called 211 and they sent me over here. And so we need more people to step up and help volunteer. So call 211, the Helpline Center. And secondly, if if you feel called to give financially to help some of the homeowners with assistance, um, our Sioux Falls Area Community Foundation, sfacf.org, has a fund set up that will be um, distributing those funds to homeowners that have been impacted by this. So that's some of the specifics on a real broad, kind of broad overarching message. I'm asking for a lot of patience in the community for the next uh, several weeks ahead because while the water's going down and, and start seeing some receding of that, there's going to be a lot of work that's going to come from this effort. Um, 
all of our bridges are going to need to be inspected based on the debris that's hitting them, based on the, some of the ice chunks are massive that are hitting our bridges, taking out a bridge at Dunham Park. Uh, parks are going to be severely impacted by this. Our roads, which were already somewhat fragile, there's a lot of washout. Uh, potholes, I know potholes are a bummer. We're working on filling them. We got pothole crews on seven days a week now that the water, or the, excuse me, the weather is finally cleared. Uh, so um, you can continue to report those potholes through the city app, uh, which again, if you just go to the app store, search Sioux Falls uh, City, and you'll find the app. So. Uh, thanks for your patience, uh, Sioux Falls, because we're going to need it in the weeks ahead. And again, just want to really, really express my appreciation to our state and federal delegation for coming and seeing what's going on in Sioux Falls and taking a tour today. And, um, and look forward to working alongside you, locking arms to get Sioux Falls back up and running. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Senator John Thune, who was with us today. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Mayor. And <clears throat> special uh, thank you. To you and your team for a very uh, quick and effective response uh, to all of this as a resident of this community. Uh, I live on the west side of Sioux Falls and so um, we are always particularly interested in uh, making sure that uh, these types of uh, crises get handled and get addressed and uh, to, the, to the degree that you were out there yourself poking holes in storm sewers, uh, you, were, uh, you were all over it so thank you for that. And um, I would just say, uh, too, it's, um, when you get to see something and observe it firsthand, there's no substitute for that. You can see the videos, you can see the photos, and uh, the media here has done a great job of sort of covering what's going on, not only here in this community, but across South Dakota. But there isn't any substitute for seeing it firsthand, and we got a chance to do that today. And to and hear the personal story of the people who are impacted by this. We visited with some homeowners, uh, saw some of the damage, uh, went down in the basement and saw the water which is receding and being pumped out, but obviously impacts that are going to be felt for a really long time. And so I guess I would, uh, you know, having had some um, experience with disasters in the past at the federal level, uh, from our standpoint, it's all kind of keyed and contingent upon the documentation that the city and the state put together. And I know the mayor and the governor will be working uh, to do that. And then uh, the, whatever the federal role can be, can be triggered, but it's all based on the declarations that come following an event like this. And to other communities across South Dakota, obviously Sioux Falls, uh, there's a lot of, uh, from what we saw today, uh, damage to some infrastructure and things like that. We know other communities have been impacted as well. And just want to encourage them, too, to, uh, to make sure that they're documenting things and uh, so that when the time comes, if there is uh, help that's available, we want to make sure that we access it. Um, on a, on a more general level, uh, just again, what the mayor said, I would reiterate, I think it's important in situations like this for people to be patient, not to take chances. Uh, the good news coming out of this, obviously, is that there, you know, in terms of public health and safety, uh, people, people were not, uh, we didn't have loss of life. And uh, it's always, uh, you know, property can be replaced, buildings can be replaced, things can be replaced, but people can't be replaced. And so uh, just be safe. Uh, listen to the instructions that are coming from uh, our public officials, and uh, and then as this recovery process gets underway, be patient. It will take a while. And I know somebody here who personally uses the trail system uh, in this this city. It's a it's a jewel. It's a great treasure. It's a great asset. But based on what I saw today, uh, it's going to be a while before uh, those things are going to be available again. I think people just have to understand that these things happen. We don't have any control over. And uh, I think this was a good two test run for whatever might be coming down the, down the Sioux River from the north here when all the snow starts to melt. And I know the mayor and his team are, uh, this was a good opportunity for them to assess the things that they need to do. But I uh, just want to compliment you on the, on the great work and staying on top of this for the, for the people of Sioux Falls and uh, this community and, this, and, the, and the governor, obviously for the entire region. She's already been down to Yankton and North Sioux City seen some of the damage there. So we'll look forward to being a partner and uh, obviously, again, uh, grateful for the chance to see firsthand today and to have the opportunity to visit with homeowners who've been impacted by this. And uh, clearly it's a, you know, it's a heartbreaking to see the damage that happens to people who have invested a lot in their home and, uh, and to see it, have much of it destroyed by some of these conditions. But, the other thing that's always encouraging in a situation like this is to see 
the way that neighbors did step up and help. And every home that we visited this morning, there were people in the neighborhood and friends and family who would come over, all investing their time and energy to try and get people back on their feet. And that too speaks volumes about the caliber of people we have here in South Dakota and the willingness of neighbors to help neighbors. So, thank you. Governor? Yep, thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, I really appreciate the mayor taking us out for a tour today. It's been a great opportunity for us to see up close damage that was done where water levels are today and that helps us with our assessment and coordination between the state, counties, and our communities like Sioux Falls that have really gone through it the last several days. So today we had the chance to observe the river. Last night I flew over it in the Black Hawk and, and we got some visual assessments done which is going to be very helpful going forward. Uh, I left here yesterday um, and we were not able to get out of here, uh, except for by Black Hawk, because the airport was shut down, all the roads were shut down. The EOC, the Emergency Operations Center, has been open for several days now and is fully staffed, coordinating with the city of Sioux Falls, coordinating with Minnehaha County, uh, and that's really the role that we filled today. But being here and being on the ground with the mayor and with the senator was very helpful because we had the chance to talk to city workers, uh, talk to those who helped a lot of people get through difficult situations, and really look at our infrastructure and what kind of potential damage we may have out there. So we've got roads that have been damaged, trails that have been damaged. We have some state workers and county and city workers that are able to get back to their buildings today, but individual families whose lives have been dramatically changed too. And one thing is that we need to watch these bridges and get them inspected after we see the kind of ice flow that has been happening and the pressure that they've had is to really know what kind of costs we're looking at is to really get that full assessment. So. Uh, looking at those situations today and seeing the worst of the worst and talking to people that really struggled uh, will be helpful in the days to come. We as a state are not anticipating that this incident will be over until early next week. And that is because we still have water flowing. We still have some coming down from the north. We're dealing with blizzard conditions in the middle of the state. So we will continue to look at uh, damages and to assess what really has happened across the state of South Dakota for the next several days. And then once that assessment and the incident is, is declared ended, we have 30 days to really look at what costs were. So I'm gonna ask people out there to document, take pictures, start looking at costs that they have had in damages. I know our counties and our city will as well um, be tallying up really what the costs may be in the damage done so that uh, we can partner uh, with making a, declaration to the federal government level. I did sign an emergency declaration yesterday morning, so that allows us to start that process. And even in those 30 days, if we find we've incurred costs beyond that, we can still accommodate those kinds of needs. Uh, the legislature was very proactive before they left Pier last week. They saw the storm coming, knew there would be damages, and in the appropriations committee and across the floor and in the general bill, they put in $500,000 in emergency uh, general funds that will be helpful through this process. 16, 16. Well, you, we, that's it, but 500 extra that we will have specifically for this area. So um, it's going to be very helpful to coordinate as well going forward with, there's about six million we spend on an annual basis, but we plus it up another 500,000 as well, which is going to be very helpful anticipating that this storm in particular is was coming and that, that will help us with those ex extra costs that we have. Department of Transportation has been busy. Uh, they were out in many of the communities. We also had Highway Patrol that really stepped up and met some needs in some of our smaller communities. We did just lose a bridge down in the Canton area. So we do know that we're still seeing pressure along uh, some of our rivers and we'll continue to see that. But we would just ask that as we go through this process that you continue to communicate with us uh, there will be potentially in some counties the ability to receive some FEMA funds uh, that we will have to document and the state will have a role in helping you coordinate. There's uh, individual assistance that may or may not be available, but we'll make sure that we're checking that box as well. But just so grateful for the leadership here in Sioux Falls, kind of high populated area with a lot of public infrastructure that could impact a lot of homes and the mayor and his team have done an amazing job coordinating that and getting through this difficult situation. As far as a statewide uh, basis, we have a lot of snow up north, so we'll continue to watch how that melts off and comes down through Sioux Falls. We still have a lot of snow in the central part of the state. I'm headed out West River later this afternoon and we'll spend some time in Rapid City and 
with those folks to really see um, what their impacts were. But by the time we're done, we'll have a pretty good idea where the entire state is. And the White House has reached out multiple times already to help us coordinate any efforts. They're very concerned about the impact on the region. They saw the thunderstorms, the blizzard conditions, the flooding, and recognized that this storm was very unique and that South Dakota may be reaching out for some assistance at the federal level that the White House could be helpful with. I did uh, go down to Yankton yesterday. They have some pretty significant impacts to their community. About 70 to 80 percent of their roads were underwater at one time. A lot of culverts are gone, a lot of bridges that were impacted. We then also went down and did an assessment from air on the flooding down to the dunes. And the dunes, uh, the Missouri crested last night at about midnight. It looks like their levees held. It was very close. They had one breach that I think cost us some damage to a home and, and a road, but I think that from what it could have been, uh, we're very grateful that, uh, that those levees were in place and that that community was very proactive in sandbagging yesterday as well. So while we had a lot of damage done throughout the state, we do know that uh, we came out in a better situation than it could have been. And I think it's really because South Dakota is pretty special. Uh, we saw neighbors helping neighbors, people stepping up, uh, helping city workers, helping uh, communities uh, really pull together. So that's what makes us South Dakota and makes us a really unique and wonderful place to live. We'll turn it back over to the mayor for some questions. All right, the, the uh, last point I, I want to clarify is uh, it sounds like 57th Street Tunnel, just getting real specific. Probably the next hour that's going to be open. We're pumping that right now. That's a big east west thoroughfare, so we should have that opened up. So, with that, um, again, want to uh, say a final thanks to the Senator and the Governor for being here. We'd be open it up to any questions that you have for, for any of us today. Great. Seeing none, we'll take that. Yeah. And uh, you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Be safe.